One of the more exciting prospects of various space missions is of course being able to discover signs of life on those planets, for example planets like Mars. But in order for us to be able to answer questions in regards to extraterrestrial life, such as does it even exist, we should probably first focus on our own planet. We should first find out when life formed here. Because by understanding when and how life formed on planet Earth, we might actually find more clues around the solar system and even around other exoplanets that could help us reveal if life truly exists anywhere else but planet Earth. And so today we're going to discuss this relatively recent study that might have once again confirmed something extremely exciting. This new study provides even more evidence that life on Earth might have started a lot earlier than we ever thought. Some of the early life on Earth might have formed approximately 4.3 billion years ago, not so long after Earth solidified and cooled down, and not so long after the appearance of the first oceans on the planet. And so let's discuss this new study and some of the other studies in regards to this that came out in the last year or so and talk a little bit more about our understanding of how life might have formed on the planet. And I guess let's start with the obvious. We still have no idea what happened and we still don't really understand the mechanism through which a bunch of organic molecules eventually turned into something really complex and became life we know today. Now there are a few other videos I've explored on the channel, and there will be some more in the future, that explore this from a slightly more chemical perspective. And also one of the older videos that goes through the famous Miller-Urey experiment explains some of the other new discoveries about this as well. You can find this video somewhere in the description below. But in a nutshell, the chemical processes even today are not truly understood. We know that complex organic molecules can be created through various chemical reactions, and we know that they can even start interacting with one another, but exactly how this leads to the complexity of life we know today is still a bit of a mystery. Today this process is actually referred to as abiogenesis, the formation of biological life from abiological processes. And generally there are two major suggestions on how scientists believe life might have started on the planet. It either started on land through the process of interaction with for example lightning, or it might have started in the oceans very likely close to what's known as the hydrothermal vents. These highly energetic volcanic structures that usually produce huge amounts of different material and are also known to possess very rich biological environments with a huge amount of complex animals all living together and often interacting in conditions that would be otherwise inhospitable to a lot of species that survive here. And the exciting part about this particular explanation is that we know that these vents very likely exist on a lot of different objects in the solar system, including moons of Jupiter and the moons of Saturn. And so their existence across the solar system and the potential of these vents being responsible for early life on our planet already kind of creates this exciting opportunity for us to one day maybe discover something like this on a completely different object somewhere out there. But because this is science, we still have to find proof or some kind of evidence somewhere. And so this is what scientists have been doing for the past few decades. And they've actually discovered a few different rock deposits that potentially showed the early life in existence on the planet. For example, this study right here that you can find in the description from 2021 presented a lot of evidence for the existence of life very close to hydrothermal vents that existed approximately 3.4 billion years ago and represented signs of some kind of a primitive cellular life. Although the most direct evidence came from the study right here from Australia that actually presented direct evidence for microfossils discovered in the ancient rocks approximately 3.4 billion years old. And for several years this was considered to be the oldest evidence of life on the planet. Evidence for life existing approximately 1 billion years after the formation of planet Earth. But several other pieces of evidence started to appear from even older rocks, specifically the rocks coming from Canada. There's this location in northern Canada in Nunavut that contains some of the oldest rocks on the planet. A lot of the rocks here are close to about 4.4 to 4.2 billion years old and many of these rocks seem to contain unusual fossils, with certain signs of complexity usually present in more complex bacterial colonies. But once again, like I mentioned in previous videos, morphology does not mean life. Basically, if something looks like life, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's life. The famous look-alike of a microfossil from the Martian meteorite that we'll discuss in one of the previous videos, once again in the description, is a perfect example for why we can't make these assumptions. 
This kind of looks like a microfossil or like a bacteria, but it was recreated using simple chemical reactions and is almost certainly not life or was not produced by life. Which was also an argument that was applied to the discovery from Canada a few years ago. And so to make their point further and to try to prove their point, the scientists behind this very recent paper tried to present a few more points of evidence. And they did so by doing a much more thorough analysis of the rocks that they had. In the process discovering even more complex and even larger structures that were previously unseen before. So for example, even though some of the smaller structures could be produced just chemically, some of the larger structures, such as the ones you see right here that resemble a kind of a tree formation, the scientists believe are most likely biological in nature. And that's of course because no chemical reaction to date has been able to recreate this just yet. More about this near the end of the video. Their analysis also suggested that there were certain structures such as hematite structures present in the rock that appeared to be preserved in a much finer quartz that appeared to have been created not by squeezing and heating the rock like it would be in natural conditions, but appeared to have been created in some other way. On top of this, some of the other microstructures discovered here were actually pretty big, up to about a centimeter long, and contained a lot of different distorted spheres, ellipsoids, and a lot of tubes and filaments that would be very difficult to explain chemically. In other words, they sort of resembled microstructures normally produced by bacterial colonies. And because these components were also associated with certain types of magnetite, it suggested that this could have been created by some kind of an iron bacteria normally residing near hydrothermal environments. Something that generally is known to exist and produce a lot of complex shapes around a variety of hydrothermal vents here on planet Earth. And there were also different microstructures and different mineralized chemicals that could have actually been byproducts of different metabolic processes from these bacteria. A lot of chemicals discovered here are sort of comparable to the energy extraction process of the bacteria that normally uses iron or sulfur for their energy needs here on Earth today. With the signs here implying that this could be some kind of an ancient chemolithotrophic bacteria that used various chemicals to produce all of their energy needed. But all of this existing on Earth that was only 300 million years old which is several hundred million years apart from the other discovery in Australia. And that's of course a big deal. It means that life could have formed on the planet really quickly. It also means that even planets like Mars, where conditions only remain hospitable for a few hundred million years, could have produced extraterrestrial life as well. More importantly, it implies that hydrothermal vents that exist in the solar system could be the source of life around other objects as well. And if we do find signs of life or actual life on Mars or around one of the other moons in the solar system such as Enceladus, Titan, Europa, Ganymede and so on, it might imply that life could be everywhere in the galaxy. But if we don't find anything, that's I guess where we have to start rewriting our current understanding of life in the universe and the origin of life on planet Earth. But going back to the studies that try to find life, ancient life, by looking at morphology, chances are that in the next year or so, there are going to be a lot of follow-ups very likely debating this and very likely producing something that might even look something similar to this by using actual chemical reactions. That's exactly what happened to some of the previous discoveries where the scientists were able to recreate very similar shapes using organic chemistry. So until we actually hear more or until follow-up studies, we don't really know exactly what this is and what formed this. So I guess only time and future studies will tell. And more importantly, if this is indeed correct and if this is how life began on planet Earth and if it involved hydrothermal vents, that's a really big discovery. It means that other sources of life we believed might have created life, such as for example various volcanic regions with a lot of lightning around them or potentially various clay deposits on early Earth or maybe even huge ice shelves that could have served as a kind of a structure for early life, all of these other propositions might have been not as correct as the one involving hydrothermal vents. And so these types of studies are extremely important in helping us understand and figure out what really happened. But until follow-up studies about these ancient rocks that potentially contain ancient life, we still find ourselves in a more or less similar situation. We still don't really know how life came to be and if it exists anywhere else. At the moment, there doesn't seem to be any evidence of life, and especially intelligent life, anywhere out there. And that's something to think about. 
But anyway, once we discover something else, or once the follow-ups start to come out, I'll make sure to make another video about what they discover. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support the channel Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.